Good morning, News and Motion family. How are we doing today on this wonderful Wednesday, February the 15th, 2023? As you're getting your coffee, as you're getting your smoothie, your breakfast, uh, getting ready to bring the kids to school or getting ready to head into the workplace, let us know where you're tuning in from, whether it's through LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, podcast, audio. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And with this being said, let's get News and Motion started. What's up, everyone? This is Gail Dudley, and it is time for News in Motion. Like Isaiah said, today is Wednesday, February the 15th. I see you, Lori Wallace. I see you, Marion Jackson. What's up, Deborah Johnson? I see you, Adrian, coming in from YouTube. Shirley Nicholson, Robert Holman, Deborah Sneed, Patricia Louse, Jeffrey Allen James, Fred Jones. Good morning to all of you. Hopefully, I did not miss anyone that I see coming in actually on the live chat. Um, from the video and all of you that are on the podcast or audio, I just want to say good morning to you. If you happen to be tuning into the replay, we just want to say thank you for spending a little part of your day with us as we are bringing you facts. We we pride ourselves on bringing you relevant commentary with a call to action mixed with an inspirational message that you get every Monday through Thursday right here. I see you, Shardinia, coming in as well. Y'all, again, it is February the 15th, 2023. I am your host, Gail Dudley, and it is time for Wednesday Workshop. Yes, y'all, on Wednesdays, we uh, do our best to make sure we give you a workshop piece, and I'm so excited to share that. After I go through the headline news, we will have our very own Isaiah Jones giving you a presentation, a workshop. So y'all don't want to miss this. Y'all really want to invite all of your friends to tune in as this young man is growing and doing some amazing things as a freelancer. Um, Y'all know he's back in college and he has been building his own business. So I turned over Wednesday workshop to him for today and he's ready. When y'all see this presentation, he built the entire presentation from the ground up. So I'm really excited to show all of that. Y'all today, today being February the 15th is my father's birthday. So happy 87th to Lewis Pryor Jr. He is the oldest prior that is still around. So I'm just excited um, for to celebrate him today on his birthday. He is 87 years old today. So happy birthday, dad. All right, y'all keeping up with what we're doing for um, Black History Month. Uh, we want to promote once again, Amber Mabry. Um, as you see, Amber Mabry is a dynamic wife, mompreneur, and co-author who enjoys being creative, expanding her entrepreneurial lifestyle, um, meeting people and connecting with big thinkers. Amber is the owner of A Pages, A A Pains, excuse me, designs, a design company that serves nonprofit organizations, entrepreneurs, and business owners with professional graphic design and marketing solutions. Y'all should know that Amber is out of the box leader who enjoys immersing herself into projects of kindness and community endeavors. In 2017, she raised thousands of dollars for the Leukemia and Lithoma Society, a nonprofit dedicated to creating a world uh, without blood cancer. Um, she is uh, as an as a leader in the Man and Woman of the Year 10 week fundraising campaign. In 2020, she created an online community group focused on relationships called Marriage Real Talk for the purpose of creating a safe space for singles, married, divorced, and widows to connect, share, and grow. Recently, she launched Thrive, and the participants just graduated last weekend. Um, this Thrive on, part, on Purpose partnership group where she encourages and coaches women to live intentionally to reach their goals. And y'all, she's also the designer of Ready Publications. I'm just all excited to share all that with you. If you want to reach Amber, you can go to Amber uh, Mabry, excuse me, thrives.com. And she has her business phone number as well. For those who are listening on audio or podcast, that is 614-407-8887. 
She's a vision coach, author, trailblazer, graphic designer. Y'all, that is Amber Mabry. So, so excited about her. And as of course, we're doing the same thing for Women's History Month. So if you are a female business owner, you have products, services, whatnot, you send us in your Facebook cover size graphic along with a one paragraph write-up with your contact information. We will get this up here. If you are a female business owner during Black History Month, it's okay to come back for Women's History Month as well. So we're going to make sure we get all of that out there. For Black History, on February the 8th, Benjamin Crump was honored by uh, St. Thomas University in Florida with the Benjamin L. Crump College of Law making, um, some say it's the first, but no, I did my research, he's the second. The first was uh, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, um, and so now it makes Benjamin Crump the second Black person named to a law school. Um, after the announcement of St. Thomas University renaming their institution after attorney Ben Crump, word came out that three well-known individuals raised funds to support the university. Um, and that would be George Clinton, Bishop T.D. Jakes, and actor Will Smith with a total of $10 million. <clears throat> so y'all, let's just congratulate him and the work that he is doing in and out the community. All right, y'all. Um, we did not mention this yesterday because we were waiting for more information, but we want to mention this today. And I see you, Dr. Antoinette and Donita and Pastor Alex, all coming in here this morning as well. So um, we have a graphic we're going to put up here for a little while um, as I go through each name. But we lost three lives to gun violence at Michigan State University. So with that, as you look at these, this image, we have um, Alexandria... Veneer, age 20, was a junior at Michigan State University. She was three. She was a three-sport athlete in high school playing basketball, volleyball, and softball all four years. Her father described her as a beautiful soul. In the middle, we have Brian Frazier. Uh, he was age 20, sophomore at Michigan State University. He played varsity lacrosse in high school and was the chapter president of his fraternity at MSU. His sister said he was a light in his family's lives. And then finally, we have Arielle Anderson. She was age 19. She was a sophomore at Michigan State University and aspired to become a pediatric doctor. She was close with her grandmother and had just stayed with her on Saturday night. Her grandmother said she was kind, loving, caring, compassionate, and driven. So we have three dead and five injured in Michigan State University massacre. Thousands of students had to shelter in place before the 43-year-old shooter eventually shot and killed himself. Every town states, and I wanna leave those pictures up just for a few more moments. Young people in America are more likely to die by gunfire than any other way. This isn't inevitable. It is a choice made by lawmakers who cower to the gun industry. Join millions of Americans working to end gun violence. I need y'all to get y'all cell phones out here, and I want y'all to text this number. Um, text the word ACT, A-C-T, to 644-33. Again, if you're wanting to join this movement to end gun violence, text the word ACT, A-C-T, to 644-33. Okay, so with that, let me turn to some good news. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, let's turn to some good news. Seven more people eight days later have been rescued from the earthquake um, in Turkey. So that's some good news. Um, we have speaking uh, uh, speaker, I'm sorry, Senator Diane Feinstein, Democrat of California. She has announced that she will not seek reelection in 2024. Um, she is, there's many people already throwing their name in that hat for that district. She is 89 years old um, and she says she will not um, put her bid in for re-election. So we have that. All right. We haven't talked about this in a while, but I want to bring up the Unboss commercial um, because there's a lot that's going on. So Isaiah, if you would queue up Unboss, um, we can get that going, um, that commercial there. But 
I want us to be thinking about media and thinking about black media in particular. So go ahead, Isaiah. A show that focuses on our issues, our concern, our stories, our voices, and our perspectives. It's less than 20 people. So everybody want to scream on social media about how black lives matter, but no one And when you only report one side of the story, that's, that's not reporting. Right. And, and that happens way too much in our ma- with our major media establishments mm-hmm. in this town. It's like... So again, <clears throat> I wanted to highlight that as we go into, I want you to start preparing for our Wednesday workshop where we have a presentation from Isaiah talking about shadow banning. So I just wanted to put that in there at this point in time so that you can be thinking about it because this is happening. We're seeing it happen more and more, especially to people who look like me and many of you. So as you're thinking about that, USA Today and AP reports that Florida, Florida's Republican governor has now condemned the college board in recent weeks over the AP African-American studies course, calling it an indoctrination and lacking an educational value. Um, This week, Ron DeSantis went even further, suggesting the state could find an alternative to the college board, the nonprofit entity that administers the AP program, as well as other critical components. So he's talking about getting rid of this. But I want you all to pay attention to this from uh, Denise Pope. She says if the state moves to financially support um, their financial support for AP, the wealthy students will continue. So continue to pay for and do whatever they want when it comes to um, AP studies. So y'all, I want y'all to pay attention to that line because once again, here's an opportunity that things are being taken away from people who cannot necessarily afford them. And y'all know what that looks like, right? Y'all know what that looks like. So I want to bring Isaiah in. So Isaiah, if you would come in and as he's coming in, y'all, Nikki Haley has announced uh, her bid for president. Um, she's announced that earlier. And then um, we just have a lot that's going on. Even with her, she wanted to talk about women. She wanted to talk about bullying. She wanted to talk about her uh, attacks on President Joe Biden and the Democrats. And a lot of it did not add up. She also started attacking some of the same things that uh, Governor Ron DeSantis have been attacking. So we need to really pay attention to this. And here's my opportunity during Black History Month. If you are not a registered voter, please register today. You can go to www.vote.gov to register to vote or check your voting registration. Um, Lori says we need to be paying attention all the time and we need to be praying all the time. Dr. Antoinette said, Tyrant, Tyrant 101, teach only your version of history, anything that does not fit your narrative did not happen. Marion saying she's praying for the um, MSU students. I don't know where Isaiah is. I thought he'd be popped in here by now. Um, oh, there he is. <laughs> um, there's a lot going on. So before you go into your workshop this morning, our Wednesday workshop for um, this week, um, Isaiah, what are your thoughts of um, AP African American history or other AP classes and how somebody just has so much control, they can make the decision. Well, we're just not going to have that anymore. It's, it's actually ties into what I'm about to talk about. Um, a lot of people who try to push their own agenda or dictate what we can learn mm-hmm. or what we should learn, actually. Um, it's To say it's unfair would be, you know, an understatement, but to try to erase the history, Mm -hmm. um, that's just plain disrespectful right there. Yeah, and here's here's a quote, Fry, and I was waiting for you to come on and share this. He says, and this is Ron DeSantis speaking, nobody elected the college board to do anything. He said this during an appearance yesterday. And then he went on to talk about woke. He's using that word all the time. And he says, these are banking uh, practices. They're just providing services. And so you can either utilize those services or not. They have provided these AP courses for a long time, but there are probably some other vendors who would be able to do a better job that he and his administration could, could elect. 
So it's really interesting that he wants, it's, it's like so much control there. And then I go back to what um, Denise Pope, she happens, she happens to be a lecturer at Stanford Graduate School of Education. She says, if a state removes financial support for AP, students from wealthier families are likely to continue to be able to access the courses and take the exams. Again, that's getting rid of people who cannot afford to do so. People would elect not to do it because they did not have, they do not have the money to do it. So what are your thoughts on that? It, it's, it's, all, it's always been about the money. Money makes the world go around. I've, I've heard that saying. All about the money. Um, a bunch of times in my life. Um, and this also shows what people, what people can do if they have a little bit of control or a little bit of power over a situation. Yeah. Um, they can either they can either use it um for the good of the situation or they can make the situation and turn into complete and utter chaos um it's it's i i'm just profound <laughs> and and baffled by everything that i'm that i'm hearing right now but then again with the politics you know i i, I, put, I put some politicians and, and car salesmen in the same bowl for real. You can't wow, really, you politicians can't really. and car salesmen in the same boat. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying with with some, but you know with with, with some, you you know you you gotta do really do your research on 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 some of these people. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, we're eager to hear about shadow banning and your presentation. So I will get out of here so you can get started. You all, please share. I support Isaiah. And again, he built this entire presentation. So let's congratulate him for that as well. All right, take it over. What a pleasure. Good morning, everyone um, on News in Motion. Thank you so much for tuning in to Wednesday's workshop. Today, we're going to be talking about shadow banning, uh, what it means, how it works, um, and how long it usually stays around. Uh, we talked about shadow banning before here on News in Motion. Uh, so this is your first time here. Um, again, welcome to Wednesday workshop. Um, if you're here um, again, you know, sit back, ask questions. Uh, what Miss Gail Daly always says: always ask the questions, always do your research. So this is what we're here for. So, um, if you can actually go to the beginning of the uh, slideshow, please, Miss Gail Daly, um, then we can get started. Explaining shadow banning um, by yours truly, Isaiah Jones. Um, what is shadow banning? So shadow banning is basically when a major social media platform, you know, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, those tend to be the main three that's been, that has shadow banning, you know, happening over the last few months. They ban or suspend a, YouTube, a user's content from showing up um, on their demographics for you page, their FYP. Demographics being your target audience. So if you have a product that caters to children, your product won't show up um, on that for you page um, because they hit you with a content warning. They hit you with um, they hit you with something, even though you really were following the guideline rules. Um, this also tends to happen um, on Instagram, Twitter, um, just everywhere, and they don't even notify you. So this is hence the term shadow banning. They hit you and they don't even uh, alert you to when your content is going to be put back out. But even though your shadow ban, the user can still see their content and respond to comments, but only you can see your own content. Your viewers, your target audience, they won't see your content for quite a few days or even a few weeks. If you can um, go to the next slide, please. So how do you know if you're shadow banned? If you notice that one week your views, your comments, uh, your reactions, uh, the likes, the shares, uh, were, let's just say they were at 5,725. And then the next week it suddenly drops down to only, uh, 572. You have been shadow banned. Um, it could be, uh, if I'm being honest, this tends to happen with a lot of people that look like us. A, a lot of black content creators who set aside the time, the energy, who actually put creativity and engagement in their content um, to make their videos engaging and to make them get reposts, get likes, get shares, um, 
can get shared all over, basically go viral. Um, whether it's videos, reels, whatever your content is, whatever your product is, if they don't have, if they don't meet the social media platforms agenda and analytics, they just straight out shadow ban you because they have an agenda that they want to push, that they need to push. So a shadow ban can also land, last up to two weeks, sometimes even a month on you know, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, your channel would get terminated. Um, you would have to make an appeal to uh, YouTube headquarters um, and a representative from there will usually get back uh, to you within three to five business days. Um, if you were banned on TikTok, uh, your content and your views will just stay at a, a low rate uh, for the next two weeks. Uh, what can we do about this? Here's some things you can do about this. This actually ties in with my next slide. Um, Lori, Lori Wallace says, is there a way to stop or maneuver it? Um, there is a way to stop being shadow man or to kind of avoid being shadow man. So if Ms. Gildelli can go to the next slide, please. You can, ah, there we go. How to avoid being shadow man. So these are just some ways to avoid being shadow man. Um, one, make sure you do not violate any community guidelines. Even if you think your content is going to, you know, trigger a guideline uh, warning or something like that, you know, proceed with caution, you know, review your footage, review your, your content, review your captions, your hashtags, um, you know, locations, review anything that you have within the post before you hit post, before you, you know, you hit post, do a, do a reread, a, a reproof. Um, make sure you read thoroughly good um, through the hashtags, um, the location, um, the caption. The caption is the main thing that draws um, these community guideline warnings. What are good hashtags? Good hashtags are um, something, okay, so a good hashtag is, uh, for you page, you know, that's a good hashtag. If you're posting something, um, for Instagram, um, TikTok, um, trying to think of some good YouTube or Facebook, um, hashtags. Um, if you're, if you're posting something about food, you know, you can be like, uh, food reviews. Um, if you are a artist, if you're an artist, um, then you can, be like beauty and art. That's a good hashtag that won't get a uh, copyright strike. Levante Going says, I believe the only way, the only way to fix shadow banning is to create our own platforms on our own websites and apps in effort to not depend on what the social media sites. Are. That is a very good point. Because like I said before, the the social media sites, if you once you start, you know, building up your your brand, your content, your product, they will literally one, they literally need you to pay for your views, your likes, your reactions. They want you to promote, they want basically for you to promote your stuff, but you're putting money in their pockets, if that makes any sense. And what you, and what they're also doing is they're forcing you or trying to pressure you into buying followers, reactions, um, just basically push their push their false analytics um when reality your content is based on real people real reactions your content is real authentic so don't fall for that do not buy followers do not use any sketchy um apps um do not you know do not buy do not put money in the social media's pockets trying to promote um your product just trust the process it's going to take a it's going to take a few days it's going to take a while but trust the process if you're also discussing a sensitive topic um, on your page or on your content be sure to include a content warning um, sometimes that will usually show up as um, this photo or video is hidden see why um, that's the content warning and if you continue and if you hit uh see video anyways it will still show the video but it will show that content warning um and like i said before do not feel pressured into paying the social media sites um putting money in their pockets to promote your business 
just for them to not even use that money to promote your stuff, but to promote other people's stuff who don't put in the time, who don't put in the effort, who don't put in the engagement to make their content um, interesting for their target audience. Uh, Pastor Alex says, this sounds like censorship. Shadow ban is basically a newer term for uh, censorship. Um, you're not really censored in a way. Your your profile is still act uh, can still be accessed, um, but your content, your most recent content will will not even show up. So, with a with a relative um, example, yesterday after uh, News Emotion show, Miss Gail Dudley showed us um, our post reach, our insight, our reactions, and I want to say. The day before, which was Monday, we were at 781. Uh, but yesterday, we were only at 71, if I'm not mistaken. So with that being, with, what that means is that we're kind of being censored by Facebook. You know, we're kind of being put in Facebook jail. So what that, being, what that means is that your, your newest post, it will get, it will, it will get posted, you know, it, it will definitely take a few hours, but it won't show up on the For You page. It won't, you will literally have to go looking on the page that you're looking for to find the most recent post that you're trying to find. Um, another way to, to avoid being shadow banned is to make sure you set post notifications. If you know that News Emotions goes live at 725, but you're having trouble getting in, another way to access News Emotion is especially if you're on Facebook, go to the News in Motion uh, Facebook page. Um, you should see somewhere where it says like, follow, message. Once you like the page, hit the like button again. It will say something about daily feeds. If you hit all notifications, you'll get all the live streams, all the posts, all the breaking news that News in Motion uh, posts about because News in Motion is all about relative commentary and relevant news. Uh, Devonta and Goyne says it is definitely censorship because they are afraid you can start making more money off your own content than they can. It's like money, it's all about the money. It's, it's literally what is, these social media sites, if I'm being honest, some of them are going broke. Some, some of these social media sites are going broke. Uh, so they need, they need you to pay them. They need the content creators to pay them to push their agenda, to push their analytics. Um, so please go to, if you're on Facebook, uh, go to the News in Motion Facebook page. Be sure to like, follow, um, go to your news feed, daily feed, hit all notifications and you will receive all alerts uh, when we go live, uh, when we post, when we have breaking news, when we have a guest coming on, when we have a workshop, when there's an e-newsletter sent out. You can also go to Ms. Gail Dudley's page um, at www.gaildudley.com. Um, but this is basically what shadow banning is. They basically censor you, they censor your content, and they push it all the way down on the For You page. So, so your viewers, your target audience will have to scroll all the way just to find your most recent post. Mike Nicholson says, that's what I do. I have to go to the page now because I do not get any notifi any of the notifications, even though I am signed up for the notifications. So that's on Facebook. That's on Facebook, Meta, um, whoever is basically controlling the social media site right now. Um, if you are still, if you're signed up for, um, no, I don't wanna say sign up, but if you, hit the notification um, and you hit for all notifications and you somehow still aren't able to get in, that is definitely on Facebook. So, you know, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, I don't know what's going on with, at, your headquarter, at your headquarters, but the fact that some people aren't able to get in um, to, to view our content we we got questions. We asking the questions. We we doing the research. So it's all on you. The ball's in your court now. So if you if you got an answer for us, please let us know because we don't know if the, even if this we don't know even if this video is going to get put out. So, and I'll be surprised if it does. That's why Devonte 
I mean, uh, De- Devontae says, this is why everyone needs to join Gail E. Dudley and News of Motion email uh, list. Exactly. Here, I can, um, what I actually do is, oh, that's what, that's what you do. Um, News of Motion just put out their um, email list, which is for, which is free. You All you got to do is go to www.gaildudley.com and hit subscribe. Um, you'll get all of the uh, emails. Um, I, I'm pretty sure e newsletters included in that too. Um, if anybody has any more questions about sh- um what shadow banning is, um, you know, how to avoid it, um, how long does it last? Uh, please ask your questions. Uh, please ask your questions. How can we protest this? Um, if you are shadow banned, uh and you've noticed that your views are, are still the same, you can make an appeal. Um, I'm pretty sure how that works is you make an appeal to whatever platform you're being shadow banned on. Um, let's just say you're shadow banned off on Facebook. So you will make an appeal to Facebook. Uh, you can either do it through a post or, um, or an email. Be sure to mention, mention the social media site and just say, you know, hello, um, my page, my content um, has been shadow banned and I would like to know why I made sure that I haven't broken any community guidelines. Uh, If I've talked about a sensitive subject, I've included a content warning and, um, you know, just asking, you know, what can they do to resolve the situation um, and how to avoid it. So that way, next time your content won't get um, banned, censored, um, but if somehow your content does get censored, then, you know, it all ties back to, it all ties back to this. How do we find community guidelines? Uh, you can find community guidelines, um, through your settings, um, and, uh, want to say your post insight. Um, so before you hit post, it should, um, uh, it should allow you to save your draft. Um, and you can actually look up what are community guidelines, uh, through Google, um, and stuff like that uh, but community guidelines are just basically making sure that your con your content isn't talking about a sensitive subject or isn't triggering for anybody um, especially in today's society um, but also just being sure that you know you're respectful in the tone of your post the way that you post and being consistent in your post that's another thing to avoid being shadow banned. be sure you're consistent in your post Mike Nicholson says shadow banning is just the tip of the iceberg, though, just like it came out in the new in the reports that TikTok people can decide what go who, who goes viral and who does not. Totally different from shadow banning, but shows how the social media outlets can also control that. That is an excellent point. And that's a, that's another great point. I made TikTok being the main one who can do this. What they would do is they can literally determine who goes viral and who doesn't, who gets, you know, who gets money from their, from their content and who doesn't. Um, nine times out of 10, if you hear like a, a real popular song of, off of TikTok, um, nine times out of 10, you'll see people like us, you know, being the main ones uh, on the original post, the main ones at the very top of the page um, of that sound. So if you click that sound on TikTok, you know, usually people like us, will be at the very top. Literally the the week after that same video, it will not be at the top. It will some it will either be at the bottom or somewhere in the middle. That's because the TikTok they realize, okay, this video was good, but it doesn't really fit our analytics. It doesn't fit what we you know what we try to push out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this video, we're gonna make it, you know, we're gonna put it at the middle, make it harder for their viewers to find it. So that way they have to, you know, click every video, scroll through, watch, which promotes the other content viewers, you know, other contents, views, reactions, shares, all of that. So they're literally promoting other people's videos because they put money in their pockets when your stuff is being authentic and real and engaging so i hope you all enjoyed um this wednesday workshop uh i'm glad i could break down what shadow banning is thank you all so much for your questions um i want to say thank you to miss gail Delhi 
for um, allowing me to talk about uh, Shadow Manning and allowing me to speak the truth of what News Emotion has been going through these last few weeks. Uh, because for us to only have right now 21 people, 21 live viewers in the room right now and only 12 impressions and watch us have like maybe 600 um, people being reached that weren't actually able to access the video, that shows right there that we're being shadow banned. We're being we're, we're we're being forced to be quiet, but we're not going to be quiet. We're going to continue to be authentic. We're going to t continue to speak the truth because that's what we do over here in News Emotion. I saw a comment that my mom had said. I want to put back up that we need to figure out how to copyright and trademark our content. You can you can definitely copyright trademark. Um, and also watermark. Watermark is um is another good word for it. But watermark is basically where you where your name of your brand is across um is across the post, so that way nobody can you know say that it's theirs. Um, so nobody can else so nobody else can um you know get money, get views, get any promotion off of their page for your stuff. So be sure to watermark it, copyright it. Um, you know, do whatever you can to be sure that your stuff is staying on your page. Um, I see some more comments in here. Uh, Ken Emerson says, excellent job, nephew. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Alex says, great job, Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, I hope this information has been helpful. Um, if you have a young person who's, you know, kind of, I don't want to say kind of big on social media, but, you know, if, if you have a young person who posts on social media, you know, talk to them about them, ask them if they know what shadow banning is. Um, and now we know what to do, how to avoid it, how to encounter it. And, you know, now it's, it's on the social media sites. It's on, it's on them to see if they do anything about this. Uh, awesome. here goes another comment by my mom. Facebook community uh, guidelines are a joke. My my posted video of my young son speaking about police was removed because it didn't fit the analytics. This this is true. I, re I remember that video. I, I do. I remember that video. I remember you talking to me about that. Um, all because we were talking about the truth. And the truth is something that they do not want to hear. But the truth is always going to come out. The, the truth is always going to come out. Um, so continue to just be, continue to just be authentic, be consistent in your post. Um, you know, if you're shadow banned, do not panic, do not buy any fake view followers, fake comments, anything like that. You know, as the slide says here, don't, you know, don't violate any community guidelines. And if you have a sensitive topic, be sure to include the community warning. That will save you a lot. That that will help you out a lot. If you put a content warning, um, you know, something, you know, talking about uh, LGBTQ, that can be a sensitive topic in today's society, um, race, anything, uh, police brutality, be sure to create, I mean, be sure to include a content warning. So where is our uh, freedom of speech? Where is the freedom of speech? We ask these questions. What, ask the questions, y'all. Where is the freedom of speech? If we're not able to express ourselves uh, through through words, through through song, through through dance, through whatever we do for the content, then, like Devontae said, maybe we should create our own. We need to create our own um, create our own websites. Um, so with that being said, thank you, Ms. Gail Deli, for showing the uh, slideshow. Um, it's about eight o'clock, so we're going to, um, we're getting ready to go into our inspirational message. Um, and I kind of had, I was kind of wrestling with what to talk about. Um, but hold on, Jeffrey Allen James, Jeffrey Allen James said, uh, Facebook community guidelines are illegal, but they get by using forum uh moderators oh facebook y'all got some y'all got some uh questions to answer for they, they got some questions to answer for uh julie uh julie neal said excellent and very informative we now know what we need to do listen it's we've, we've been doing this our our entire lives from from the very beginning of time 
you know, we, we continue to have these obstacles be put in front of us. Um, but, you know, we're here to overcome. So this is, this is what we continue to do. So with that being said, our inspirational message today, um, I just want to say that it is worth it. It is definitely, it's worth it. Um, the process, whatever you're going through right now, uh, whatever you're sh striving for, it is worth it. Uh, I remember a few months ago, um, I was wrestling with faith. Um, I was wrestling with, you know, talking to God more. I, I mean, I'm just going to be transparent on here. I'm a, um, but I remember going and reading uh, Hebrew chapter 11, the entire thing. Um, and the overall summary is basically the signs and rewards, the different levels of faith. Um, you know, Abraham being able and willing to sacrifice his son to be faithful to God. Um, Noah building the ark to show that he's in alignment with God and show that, you know, he's going to be faithful to him. This is worth it. Being shadow man, it's low, it's it sucks in a way, but it's worth it because it shows what you're willing to go through to be faithful, to be consistent, to promote your business, promote your product, to show that you're not going to stay down, that you're going to continue to fight for what you believe in, basically. And <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I just wanted to say that. Being faithful, it's it's a process. It's it's a work. You're gonna have some restless nights. You're gonna have some some early mornings where you know you don't want to do anything, but you know you go up and you go after it. So I just want to say that it's worth it. Um, continue to be faithful, um, even on those days where it's hard to be. Um, continue to be consistent, um, and continue to just be authentic. Be you. Be, be authentic. Don't change who you are to fit somebody else's agenda or to, to, to fit in with somebody else. I, I know what that's like because I've, I've done that before. So I just want to come on here, um, talk about Shadow Bandit. Again, thank y'all for your questions, your comments. Uh, thank you, Ms. Gail Dudley, uh, for allowing me to um, talk about Shadow Bandit and uh, talk about the inspirational message. Um, with that being said, we will see y'all tomorrow for more news in motion. Um, y'all know what Miss Gail Daly says stay well and remember to make some bold moves. We out.